Welcome everybody to Debate Deathmatch episode 2. Today we have our competitors Blowhole on one side of the affirmative position and I don't know on the opposition. What they will be debating is human beings have an inbuilt preference system genetically. So a very specific question um, being asked here. And yeah, take it away, Blowhole. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Then we'll go to I don't know and we will enter opening statements. At which point either or side will be giving us their position on the matter or how they what uh, terms they've agreed to individually. And then we will enter the debate as planned. So take it away, Blowhole. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Blowhole. Uh, I joined the boss's uh, stream a few weeks ago. And I like arguing with people. I've also got a hobbyist level interest in biology. So. I was maybe trying to bait people into this argument and it seems like it worked so yeah i hope uh, you'll find it interesting what i'm going to say today i've researched quite a lot here there's a lot of facts that you can hopefully take with you and tell other people to sound smart yeah That's so it. so both uh both debaters seem very confident i will just say that from what they've been telling me in the sidelines both of them are very very confident and we will see who is going to come out the winner now um I, by the way blowhole do you stream or do any content otherwise that you want to nothing, nothing. No. all right okay so i don't know is next hey i'm uh i don't know in the boss's discord and i go on mercury on most social platforms and i have an interest mostly with uh psychology and yeah i think the topic at hand pertains to psychology a lot and i'm excited to get into the debate should we do opening statements um Maybe we should wait till the boss comes back. One of these things, I have to take so many screenshots, so it might take a while for me to compile the source. <laughs> or I could send it in plain text, but I don't want to do that because it's hard to decipher in plain text. Okay, so where are no we? No way. Oh, okay, cool. You're back. Yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, don't start, guys. Don't start. Wait, were they gonna start off? <laughs> yeah. Were they? Holy right, shit. Mercury stopped me. Yeah, I had to fucking jump out. My landlord's here. Thank you, Kay, for like spotting me. Uh, boss AFK. <laughs> right, okay, so you've both done your opening statements, I can imagine. We've introduced ourselves. Are you so intru I, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for opening statements now. Let us know what your position okay. is on the matter, what you've, how much, okay, no, not really how much studying you've done, but if there's anything like re re uh, relevant, so credentials or studies or anything like that that you guys are involved in, just let us know. That is relevant to the conversation. Go ahead, blowhole. Okay, well, uh, my opening statement's going to lay out my whole position here, so just go for it you've got five to ten minutes maximum okay okay sounds good so i think it will be useful to introduce the reason why this debate is happening in the first place i was in the boss's twitch chat last week and debating of himself and my debate opponent today on the genetic link behind in-group and out-group biases I pointed out a study i read where babies even as young as three months old smile more towards members of their own race in other words their in-group the boss asked me to do a debate death match, uh, death match on it, so here I am. First, let's define what we mean by in-group preferences. This refers to the tendency for individuals to favour or feel more positively towards members of their own group based on factors like race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, compared to those outside the group. This can manifest in various ways, such as increased trust, cooperation and empathy, uh, empathy towards in-group members. An example of this would be a member of your in-group being late for work. You would typically find this uh, understandable and assume they were just stuck in traffic. Yet a member of an out-group in the same situation would likely be seen as a lazy arsehole. 
potentially interesting exercise for this will be the tendency for some listeners to think that I'm being racist in my statements. This desire deep down comes from your out-group subconscious evaluations uh, for any conversations to do with race. I encourage you to attempt to be aware of these. To sum up, it's a framework for analysing the fundamental motivation behind social prejudice and bias. The evidence from multiple scientific uh, disciplines points strongly towards in-group bias being a deeply rooted predisposition in human psychology and behaviour with significant biological underpinnings. Theories from evolutionary psychology, behavioural ecology, such as kin selection and reciprocal altruism, these provide evolutionary logic as to how this function developed. Developmental psychology has documented in-group favouring behaviours emerging early in infancy through experiments by researchers such as Kinsler et al. Social psychology paradigms like uh, Tashfeld's famous minimal group uh, studies demonstrate how even arbitrary group distinctions can trigger in These guys are serious. Neuroscientific methods, including brain imaging, have isolated uh, specific neural mechanisms and regions like the ventral stratum that become activated in response to in-group cues. This is by Van Babel. I'll provide the source for that. This, uh, this evolutionary basis is reinforced by more findings across science showing in-group favour uh, favouring emerges incredibly early in humans. Even infants as, as young as three months old exhibit preferences for familiar racial in-groups and native languages. The languages happens at six months. That's called a bias, okay? almost any cultural learning occurs. This phenomenon also manifests in the neurobiology of our brains, with studies consistently demonstrating greater activation and empathy and reward-related regions when viewing in-group compared to out-group members. Our brains are hardwired to distinguish us versus them. Research has demonstrated that oxytocin can enhance feelings of trust and empathy towards individuals who are perceived as part of one's in-group. For example, a study by Dr. Drew et al. in 2010 found that participants That's, I don't who received know oxytocin job. were more likely to display Lesbian. favoritism towards their in-group and were more defensive and less cooperative towards the out-group members. So oxytocin uh, tocin influences this behaviour. It exaggerates it, basically. In-group biases have been documented from hunter-gatherers to modern nation-states across the globe. Such a common social trait, hence it's shared, deep-seated uh, cognitive predisposition in our species. Well, cult uh, culture under... Oh, shit. Sorry. I'll be back in 10 seconds. Yeah, no worries. Let, let's uh, let him... I, I don't know what, um, what he's going. But I do want to say, holy fucking shit, these guys are well, well prepared. I'm way... I'm punching way above my weight when, like, trying to host this shit. God damn, I genuinely thought like this is like some fucking LARPA from like some far corner of the internet, just like fucking trying to be racist as fuck, but no, he's genuinely serious. <laughs> Holy shit, I don't know, you better be prepared, motherfucker. Holy shit, I'm rooting for you, brother, but god damn. He's saying a whole bunch of big words that I don't know anything about. <laughs> oh, came with some sauce. Yeah, he's got something. He's saying something there. I don't know, know exactly what's being said, but I know something is being said. Um, holy shit, yeah. God damn. Um, yeah. I won't worry about it too much, guys. He's probably just going to go check the sheep or some shit. Like, they've got a bunch of, like herd animals out in scotland out in scotland yeah <laughs> that's that's <laughs> that's my scottish accent bro i can't do it very well next stop my clone let's hear it yeah no no we, we're gonna give him a chance to finish off he's got a minute and a half to finish his opening statement once he gets back. Plus one for letting sheep get away. Minus one, yeah, true. Plus one for racism. Based. Holy shit. Based. <laughs> Absolutely fucking based. Ah, uh, okay. Insane. I need to figure out... Uh, I need to... You guys are not allowed to look at this. Fucking judges in the Twitch. Actually, it's fine if the judge... Um, I don't know. You don't have my Twitch open. Uh, you, you have my Twitch muted, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, just leave it open and just mute it just in case. I'll tell Blowhole too as well because sometimes I talk while you guys are talking. It's just something that I like to do shitting on the debaters while they're debating. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry, but if you are going to be silly enough to reduce complex human behaviors to MRI scans, I can't really take you seriously. That is not what most MRI machines can do. Wait, no, lesbian hot sauce... It 
feels like wants to get involved with the debate. I've already told you, lesbian, you can participate in a debate and you refuse it outright, okay? Good thing about debate death matches, if you are speaking facts and hopefully Xen is not one of the judges, then you might actually win. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Give it, give it, give him one, one or two more minutes and then, because I don't want to stop okay, the flow. I'm good. Oh, yeah, I'm and good. you refuse judging. I will listen to this person, but can you ask them to send over the info? Lesbian, you are not in the debate. <laughs> Sorry, my, my connection was bad. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Um, this is hate crime with the shots that lesbian is taking. <laughs> Hence, okay. I need to judge now. LHS. No, I'm just reading chat, bro. Don't worry about it. Um, why can't we ask for the sources they are citing, lol? Because you're not a judge. The judges get to see the sources. They are posted in the channel that they have access to. So they can enter and exit the chat um, to receive the sources. Now, I've already told them they can po po post all the sources prior to the debate or during the debate it's up to them um yeah only j judges have access to that that uh, material but you can get involved with the debate by doing the things above um obviously it seems like you want to ask them a question or like make them respond to a question which could potentially favor i don't know or blowhole depending on what type of question you're asking but yeah those are the chat's options um, like I said, you just send the bits with your question, if it's a question or the trivia, and yeah, we'll we'll do that. Um, okay, I need to. Okay, hold on. Yeah, let me get one of the links for the sources that I have. Yeah, you can po post them as we go along, or you can um, post it directly if you want. Obviously, you're going to have to give us a title for which one it is. Um, when you sorry, do... sorry, I'm back. Yeah, sorry no worries. That. You've got a minute and a half. So you want to okay. continue where you left off. I don't know exactly know where that is. <laughs> Me neither. Okay, I'll just skip <laughs> to this paragraph. So research in animal behavior and genetics has identified in-group cooperative patterns and other, so uh, in, in other, sorry, in other social species. And insects like ants and bees, specific genes regulating kin recognition and preferential treatment of nest mates uh, has been isolated, such as findings by Krieger and Ross in 2002. Studies of primates and other mammals have found similar, uh, from Chang et al. in 2013. They've mapped genes associated with in-group altruism and willingness to reward members of one social group over outsiders. This points towards in-group bias likely having ancient evolutionary origins, which preclude modern human culture and society. Or in other words, natural selection brings about in-group preference at a biological level because this was advantageous to our ancestors. An, an innate tendency towards in-group bias does not preclude our ability to transcend it through reason and willpower. Just as we're able to withstand pain or swallow bad taste in medicine, we can also overcome our propensity towards in-group bias. And I rest my case. Perfect. Okay. I have no idea what was just said, but we'll take it over to I don't know side and he will give us the opposition statement. So that's up to the judges. Go for it. I don't know. Okay. So my opening statement is as oh, it doesn't go as in depth if that's fine, but um, yeah, you've got five minutes. Uh, oh, okay. So I reject the notion that humans are inherently predisposed to feeling a higher sense of comfortability with certain races. This can be demonstrated from the sources that I will bring up later in the debate to say that humans have a higher sense of comfortability towards a certain race based towards a certain race based on genetics is, in my opinion, an overstatement of the facts and scientific research on the topic. We can examine this in babies if you want, but in addition to examining this in infants, I would also like to examine this in early adolescents. My opponent has cited the authors of the sources. I personally don't have like the authors of the sources. I have, um, I'm sure you can find them on some of the websites that I will post during the debate. Um, okay. Also, I'm sure that my opponent will acknowledge this, and he did. 
this debate is a result of a mini debate of sorts that I had with my opponent in the Twitch chat in the boss's stream. And that is the context of the debate, and I'm looking forward to arguing with my opponent on the subject of the matter at hand. Okay, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so you guess go ahead now. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh shit, you guys can't think... hear me. Never mind, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I was no. muted. Yeah, okay. So instead of an old fashioned coin flip, I'm going to ask you a trivia question, and whoever answers the question gets to go first. So, qu question one. Now known as Meta, Facebook was originally named what? Fast person to answer oh, no. goes first. No idea. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> this is brilliant. What country uses approximately 4 billion miles of toilet paper each year? You're going to have to guess. USA? United States. United States. Any other guesses, boys and girls? China? There we go. Right, blowhole goes first. P perfect, yeah. It's actually the Facebook. That is correct, Stella. All connected as one. Okay, so China, yes, does use 4 billion meters of toilet paper. Right, so blowhole, this floor is all yours until we require a break or this goes on for an extended period of time, at which point you guys will be able to like go to the toilet or do whatever the fuck you want. I don't know. Jerk off. Nobody cares. Right, for the time being, opening statements are closed. Everybody knows what, what is going on here or is as stupid as me and has fuck all clue what is being debated. So, blowhole, the floor is all yours. Feel free to ask any questions, make any claims, just a normal debate as you would have it usually, okay? Go ahead, buddy. Okay. Well, I think the best place to start would be where the argument first started last week, which was talking about infants at three months old. Uh, they smile more when looking at people of their own race. And this is scientifically measured. It's just a fact. It might sound racist, but it is true. Uh, it's interesting to me looking at the reasons behind it. The boss last week actually brought up a good point that it could be familiarity. And after reading the sources, that does seem to be one of the main reasons why. Uh, there's no cultural enforcement of it because uh, the baby's only three months old. You know, it's, it's just like uh, you see something, you get used to it, and that's built into the baby. Uh, but basically, the fact that they even do that in the first place shows that it's genetic. It's not a learned behavior. This is something built into babies that they'll look at their own race because that's the one who brought them up and they'll have an in-group preference for them. And I don't think there's any way around that. I'll be interested to see what Mercury says. Yeah, okay, so... In terms of uh, in-group and out-group preferences, I feel like it has less to do with race in terms of adolescence, but um, in infants in terms of like three months old, I will concede that that is true, that they are more familiar with race, um, that they have seen more often, therefore they have a higher comfortability with that race, um, and I concede on that point. Okay. Do you want to ask me anything, or should I keep going? Respect, respect. Um, I was thinking. Um, do you what? What do you want to focus on first? Like, um, infants in terms of like newborns, three month olds, um, sample sizes of like four to twelve year olds. You know what I mean? What what works best okay. for you? Do you have any information on that? Um, I have one information. I can post all the pages of the source that I have, but it's, but, um, hold on. But yeah, Good apparently, time. yeah, hold on. I'll post all the sources, all the pages for the source. Okay. I'll be interested to, see, uh, interested to see what sources you have. So I've got quite a few myself. Uh, you were saying something earlier, which... I don't know if I wrote it down. 
high sense of comfortability. I'd like to look into that. Check the chat. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Okay, Fuck, so I'm those are it. all the those are all the um stages. It compiles four studies. Um, we can go through each of the studies if you want, because I wrote kind of an abstract of the studies. Um, yeah. some of these were okay. So I'll open. Yeah, okay. I'll open these two then. Right, we're going into depth then, boys. Yeah. Judges, yeah. take a look at the screens. You have access to the channel. You can all open the links if you need to look at them. Come in and be muted when you do enter the chat. Just telling you guys, we don't want to hear a sound from you. All right, go and come as you please. Just don't be, we, we don't want to hear you. All right, thank you. Okay, no so. No less. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do, you don't have to. You don't have to, but I wrote like an abstract, which is kind of like text taken from it, um, and kind of a, kind of a, oh, what is it, a summary of the studies taking place. But um, there was study one that actually kind of supports your claim. I'll concede that. Um, in one of the experiments, they take two hundred and sixty-three white Americans, aged three to 40, 14 years of age, and seventy-nine adults. They test the participants alone in a quiet room. The material faces they used were computer-generated male faces. Um, I'll skip to parts that are more relevant. So the relevant part is that the um, faces were unambiguous, so um, no facial features uh, lean towards one race more than the other. Um, and Look, guys, the, we've talked about ads before. So they kind of went more for emotions instead of like race so if you look at the picture um there hold on yeah if you look at the picture they show um one person with lighter complexion and then one person with darker complexion and um they had 15 and 15 images of both um and so the result of that study was um the results of the experiment that where that faces seemed angry, faces that seemed angry were 1.32 times more likely to be categorized as black faces. Um, and study number two, the conditions were the same as study number three. I knew kids were racist. Um, and the age group was five through 12 and 83 adults. Savages. Um, but it was with Asian um, faces instead. And the results were that Asian faces were 1.32 times more likely to be classified by the participants as angry faces. Look, mate, kids um, are kids. And then for the third study, they take Taiwanese um, people. They're so pretty they did stupid. the study in Taiwan. They're pretty stupid. And then yeah. they had um, the sample sizes. Hold on, let me look at the sample sizes. 201 Taiwanese children between the ages of 4 and 12 and 80 Taiwanese adults. And um, the result of that were uh, on Asian an analysis yeah, of the data that included those participants who were successful on categorization trials and the pretest were that angry, <laughs> angry faces Asians, good name one point two four okay. times more likely to be categorized as white than Asian faces. Um, <laughs> they accounted for a delay because there was a little mishap in the study for a little bit. Um, spanning two cultures no and then for the fourth one it's they okay so for <laughs> all these pages they were asking one question that led them to the final study that was whether the um in group was being classified as angry because of their race or their socioeconomic status or their social standing and as for that i can In contrast to the previous three experiments, this experiment showed no overall effect of racial of facial expressions on categorization. So um, African Americans did not associate more with their in-group as more positive. They actually associated 
with their in-group as more, um, oh wait, never mind. Black Americans did not view angry faces as more or less likely to belong to the racial outgroup. So that means um, with white Americans, they saw the outgroup as more angry. With Taiwanese people, they saw the outgroup as more angry. But with African Americans, the outgroup was not seen more or less angry. Interesting. And, okay. And can this, can I, this not be used as an argument in favor of this being inherited? And people will the fact that these differences seem to be occurring. Like I'm assuming black people towards white people isn't just neutral. I'm assuming there's a slight negativity attached to that too. Do you guys want to summarize it up until now? Because people are like um, just like to bring it back to base essentially. What it what is being argued for? Is this the overall position or is this a specific question at first? It has to relate to the babies and how they react to people from different races, correct? Oh, I have a I have a separate study for like infants. Okay, so well. what were you talking oh, about? Back on that. what were you guys were just uh, explaining, just so everybody understands, and you guys can also understand each other a little bit better. So, what was the okay. what? Why were you citing that study? Um, I don't know. I was citing that study because um, it encompasses a wide age range, and it also encompasses adults as well to compare them. So it took a study. It took a sample size of. Uh, 263 white Americans aged three to four, and then it, uh, for the final study, it took the participants of 56 black American children between the age of four and 10 and 41 black adults, mm -hmm. and then 201 Taiwanese children between the ages of four and 12. Mm -hmm. So is, I was... What you're trying to say and is the that and the, the fact that it's different... So, sorry, Blowhole. And the conclusion you're trying to come to is what, what, why you're referring to the study is because... What is the conclusion that you come to? Um, the conclusion that I come to after reading the study yep. is that um, racial bias is more of a socially conditioned thing. And um, uh, another factor that plays into that is uh, socioeconomic status and social status. Okay. Thank you very much. Obviously, that plays a part. But yeah, I'm saying that it plays um, yeah, more of a part um, in terms instead of genetics. Because in and out group is a genetic thing. Like it is seen in genetics. But um, the I would agree is... with that, that the environment shapes what you're going to define as an in group and an out group more than genetics. My argument mainly relies on the fact that it exists in the first place. Okay. Oh, yeah, in and out. Okay, so the the confusion you guys are having is essentially both of you are acknowledging that what I don't know just cited is relevant. Both of you acknowledge that it is relevant. What your argument seems to be placed on is to what extent. I don't know is saying that this is the majority case scenario and Blowhole is saying I think this is the minority case scenario, correct? Yes. Okay, so would you like uh, guys to give us a percentage perhaps or some type of scale so we understand how far apart you are from one another? So I don't know, if you had to rate this on a scale, what would you say this is from a 1 to 10? Um, 7? Rate like the genetic factor? Um, no, not the genetic, like... the one you just mentioned, the out external forces, oh. the environment. Yeah. Oh yeah, the environment, probably like Seven or an eight. A seven or an eight. Okay, blow hole. It has to be the majority because if I can create a hypothetical here where let's say a white person was adopted by a black family, then they would have that in group preference towards black people. So it's more to do with the proximity of the people around you. So going back to what um Mercury was saying there. A lot of these are down to social conditioning, socioeconomic factors, yada okay. yada. So the question is, to, to what extent do you feel that those conditions are the majority case? Seven. Or seven. seven also, or so you don't have yeah. a disagreement. You both agree. So the debate you guys are having is Blowhole is trying to prove whether this is ever present at any point, at any moment, right. even if it's 1%. Exactly. And I don't know is arguing that this is never present. Which oh. I think is impossible. Oh, no, I believe it's present. You, <laughs> it's, okay. 
Good to be. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> fucking yeah. I believe it's present, but it's more of a social and socioeconomic factor. Okay, so maybe there is a further disagreement. Blowhold, are you? Uh, do you, do you guys want to lay out a percentage? Like, uh, so you both said it's a seven or an eight. So, okay, what about I don't know. <laughs> Wait, why did okay, I even interrupt so. this? I've got to let them go around it in a circle for two hours. Okay, so I don't know. Do you want to give us an estimate of what percentage do you think is genetically impacted? So to what extent do you think it is? Again, use the, use a percentage. Now, considering we're only working with 20% here at the moment. Do you think it's 20% of the time that it's present? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. What about blowhole? I don't know. I don't know. Not possibly. I mean, just take it's a guess. A wild guess. Entertain me, please. This debate has lasted for 30 minutes. 27%. 27%. Okay. okay. Well, you guys have a disagreement there. Um, it's 20% versus 27%. Okay. Um, what about other elements of um, things like genetics? Do you, do you inherently disagree with those types of things, Blowhole? Um, well... What I was going to do was talk about the, the fact that this exists and is studied in more depth in ants or bees and rhesus monkeys, which actually does show that there's a literal, there's a single gene, which if there's more of it or less of it, or if it's activated more or less, it actually dictates how positively or negatively they see other groups basically not related to their family, mm -hmm. which I think is the same case in humans. Okay, I don't know if I don't know has it is opposite uh, holds an opposite stance on that. I don't think so, right? Um, I believe that um, genetics can have a factor, but they definitely do not have as nearly as much of a factor as um socio uh, economic status and social status. Okay, oh, well. let's uh, let's clear the table here for a second. Um, all right. So prior to the debate. Did you both um, have a discussion where I don't know's position on this was extreme? It was a 100% case scenario. Like, even though you've had this disagreement before, how did both of you come to the conclusion that was a, there was a disagreement there to begin with? Were, was somebody failing to lay out the terms correctly or something like that? We barely even spoke about it last time. It was actually yeah. you I was arguing with, uh, yeah. the boss. Yeah. But... I think we mostly agree. We we'll probably differ on the details here, which could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, but the the discrepancy there is like, I don't know, is even acknowledging that it is present, like even twenty percent of the time, and you're at twenty seven. It's not that much of a difference in order for you guys to have a like, unless you're talking about like going into the extreme details. Because like, if you're talking about seven percent, that's not enough to. Yes, keep scoring fucking judges you guys are lazy as hell we've been going for half an hour let me let me let me figure out what's going on here all right jesus <laughs> right um i don't know was your position very extreme on this prior to the debate me no i don't know i believe i don't know mercury well me personally prior to the debate yeah and then i researched more into it and then i realized that in and out is is a thing oh. a psychological Phenomenon. Interesting. So after you did a bit of research, you figured out that it is present. It's just um, like only happens a minority of the time, like something like that. Yeah. Okay. And your original position was this is never present. Or I mean, my original position, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I was more uninformed. Okay. And blowhole, your position has not changed from the beginning. It actually has changed a little bit. Yeah. I think it had more responsibility for okay. racism and stuff like that. But it turns out, well, if you're being reasonable, it's quite clear that there's more environmental factors here. Yeah. So we've came closer to each other. Oh, awesome. We... So at the beginning, you were like, this is a major reason why this yeah. occurs. And then it went from major to minor. Well, then yeah, you I mean, see the... fucking people, like, if w Debate Deathmatch did something, incentivizes these motherfuckers to do some research and stop being a bunch of idiots, you see? You see, guys? You see? There's always a positive in this. Never mind. Okay. So, do we have, do you have any other strong positions when it comes to the genetics blowhole? I do have one that I didn't know if I would use it here or not, but maybe 
it's worthwhile. Yeah, go for it. I mean, the debate is about genetics, so it is relevant to the conversation. It might not be directly impacted. Let's just see what I don't know's position on that will be. Okay, so this is a weird one, and I didn't research this yep. too much. Yeah. But to introduce this, uh, <laughs> you know how when you fart, it doesn't smell as bad as other people's farts? Mm-hmm. Wait. <laughs> okay, you guys get into that for a second. <laughs> I'll be right back. Two seconds. You get get into right. it. Do you know about that, Mercury? Now, if you fart, it doesn't smell as bad, basically. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I mean, this is actually... I do have sources for this, just to be clear. I was going to build an entire argument <laughs> off this because I thought I might need to. Um, basically, when we pass wind, there's very minute differences in sulfur and in methane and all these kind of things. It's like what they call a, a fingerprint of yourself. And when your body smells that, it can tell that it's your own uh, fart, basically. It can tell the fingerprint and it automatically, this is why I'm bringing it up, your brain automatically registers that as something that's not bad or not disgusting. You following? Yeah. Okay, so I was going to build an argument off that where this is called kin selection. If anyone wants to look it up, this is called kin selection, this kind of general idea of your cells in your body and your genetics favours genetics that's closer related to you. So it will favour parents and then it will slightly less favour but still favour cousins, and second cousins, and so on and so on. It's kind of like a, an exponential curve. Basically. Wait, did you say cancellation? Like cancel, cancel, cancellation, no. cancellation? Is that no? No. What is it called? <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. It's my accent. It's kin selection. It's called cancellation. Uh, uh, okay, you have no. to spell it for me, Mister Scottish. K I N K I N selection. K I N selection. selection. Okay, kin selection. All right. So, Kin selection yeah, is where kin. cells in your body, your genetics, favours genes that are closer to you, and the further away it gets, the less it favours them. Are you following? Okay, it's not, it's not about following or not. Does I don't know care about this subject, because I'm going to have to find a subject for you guys to debate right now, considering that this seems to be well, this like... This is my argument. Yeah, okay. Hold on up. All right. Um, okay, okay. I want to ask if you want to move to more the, the, um, yeah, inherent, like, in terms of, uh, babies, like, do you want to do infants or three month olds? Because if it's three month olds, then it'll probably go in your favor, to be honest. But if it's baby, like, infants, then it will probably go in my favor either way. I'm not sure about that. But wait, before we do this, I'm just going to explain my point then, because obviously no one sees the point in this. So, People of different races are more genetically distant to yourself. So your body has this inbuilt kin selection mechanism which selects for people in your race. So for example, okay, they're continuing from here. Or anything which involves cells in close contact with yourself will be more likely to be rejected the further away genetically someone is. That's not the original position, David. The race, the basically. original position was for humans in general. They both one. acknowledge that within adults, it's not present, or at least it's a minority of the case. Okay, okay so Let's see if yeah, um, different for babies. And are infants. you saying that inherently people are more <laughs> no, no. Um, inclined Literally right there to in judges section? Just go and associate their in group with like. A the race, good, a, yeah, like a, their race. I'm not even with a right. good connotation. If a good connotation, yeah, your body and your genes ex- are more likely to accept it, basically. So that's part of the in group. Yeah, like, but like, even when you're born. Yeah. Throughout your whole life. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna cite this one study. This one study that says humans, David. I don't know. Nobody cares what you think, David. From That's what they agree to debate. From 2022, nobody you cares about that, your opinion of the matter. You don't have to read it because they the, both agreed you know to I mean. debate that. But okay. humans, um, not babies, humans. Moving on. Here it is. So I I more looked at the 2022 study, so I'm gonna have to re-evaluate. Um. An idiot. So it looks at the procedure. So the procedure was um, 
Newborn babies were tested in a quiet room seated in a semi-upright position in a padded infant car chair, which was secured to a table. This is important because if there was a um if there was a distinguishment between no, babies are an element um, of it. They're just like when you one say environment humans, versus, adults, versus another, babies, then it could be that the babies everything are involved more pre disposed to He's reacting arguing it only in a bad way because of their environment. That's not the position. But they were all put in the same environment. Uh, and the stimuli was well, the stimuli was thirty two color images of male and female adults. Um from four distinct ethnic groups Caucasian, Middle Eastern, Asian, and African. Okay. Okay. So they limited the movement of the babies, but they ensured their safety approximately 30 centimeters away from the screen onto which the paired images were projected. Um, and they kind of, okay, so they kind of measured um, how you much guys are supposed the to babies were to this. look at a certain race Why are you yapping about as well? opposed to others. So you would agree that if um, Genetically, somebody was predisposed to their own race, then they would probably look at their own race longer than like. No a race shit, of a different David. Ethnic group. No shit. Blowhole is arguing that is present. There could be a case here where I don't six know, months the baby's more curious. Or at least they weren't previously. They might look at races even if they're part of the outgroup. Yeah, so in this specific in this specific study, um, the data revealed no significant effects on gender, which was good for their study because they wanted to figure out if the babies were inherently um, predisposed to feeling more comfortability within their um, gender. And then they did race. Um, and they they measured this by how long the babies looked at um, the monitor. And they found that the viewing times were basically the same. Like for Caucasians, they viewed um, 49% of the time in other race faces, 50.27% of the time. here that says, with regard to processing of species information from faces at six months of age, infants are able to discriminate uh, both human and monkey faces, whereas at nine months old, so three months older, they can only discriminate human faces. So this, to me, if they're even able to discriminate between monkey and human faces, that is part of the development to learn and not necessarily tied to in-group preferences. Are you saying that the babies um, develop a more uh, better way to classify the in-group and the out-group as they grow in age? Uh, well, I think they've always got it, but what I think this is saying is that at six months in this very specific period, babies are more likely to look into their env environment and learn, and it's not uh, in-group preferences that are dictating that. There's another genetic factor or whatever in there. The brain's growing and, and learning, and it wants to take in as much information as possible because if this doesn't happen as much at nine months, when it's more developed, that shows that this is a specific de uh, developmental phase. Yeah, but do you think that uh, development would be more a genetic development or um, more, like, obviously, like, when we're looking at like things, um, we genetically, it's hard to explain. Okay, so do you think that it's more genetics or environmental factors in terms of the specific example? I think this is more genetics, but I don't think it's related to the concept of race bias genetically. I think, I mean, this is just me guessing here, theorizing that this is more to do with curiosity than anything else. Well, if you both well, yeah, agree, if you both agree that within adults, which was the previous conversation that you had, within adults, you're both put in at a seven, seven. In other words, you both recognize that within adults, after the environment has shaped them, that whether those genetics existed previously, they either have subsided or they didn't exist in general. So you both agree to that one. So you know what humans look like, what adults look like. Well, now you're going to infants and babies. So obviously, if genetics are present, you would find them 
ever more present the further back you go down the line. So this would look like a one month old infant would have the most um, reaction to somebody else who's not of their own race. And then a six month old would have a less reaction. A one year old would have a less reaction, just goes less and less and less the further out they go, correct? Well, this study seems to indicate that it goes down at nine months. Yeah, it goes down. Yeah, it goes down. So that doesn't really work. Wait, it goes down. In other words, if their genetics were present, then it would go down because now the environment is shaping them. It's no longer a matter of nurture. It's a, it's not a, no longer a matter of nature. It's a, it's a matter of nurture now. In other words, once the baby can conceptualize and understand things in the real world, um, uh, it becomes less and less inclined to rely on its genetic interpretations of reality or whatever, I can imagine. How I'm interpreting this is at three months, it's nature. Yeah. At six months, it's nurture. And at nine months, it goes back up to nature again. It was a fluctuation. Okay. Well, do you guys have a disagreement about that? Do you guys think that those are opposite things? I'm just trying to narrow it down. Where is the disagreement you guys are having? Because when it comes to adults, you've already both acknowledged that while you previously disagreed with each other, you've both met halfway. When it comes to babies... In in adults and as well as age groups from like 4 to 12, I believe it's more environmental factors. Is more sure what the the engine or the, the fuel that pushes us towards that is the genetic factor, in my opinion. And as I was saying before with my theory, the more genetically... That, okay, what's your opinion on it? I believe that um, as we grow up in an environment, it shapes our brain to conceptualize certain races as the in-group and other races as the out-group, considering the environment that we're in. So, I believe that um, somebody who's in a certain environment can be shaped to not associate uh, certain people with outgroups in terms of race. Of course, yeah, it can happen. That's what I actually said in my opening statement, where we can take medicine that tastes bad, we can swallow it, or we can put up with pain, but those things still exist. It's just that we're using willpower to overcome it. It's the same with racism. It's still in us all. I think everyone accepts this intuitively, that we're all racist at some core fundamental level. Do you agree with that? I believe it is way more um, towards genetics in terms of, and I don't believe that we're subsiding our genetic makeup to uh, be more inclusive. I think that's what's really happening. I mean, yeah. look at uh, before these environmental factors like wokeism and all that kind of stuff started to educate society in terms of being more favorable to other races and stuff and being fairer. The natural predisposition of humans forever has been uh, towards racism. Yes, but don't you think that um, in recent studies we would see um, African American people um, being more being more centered towards our own race instead of others in the age groups of like 4 to 12. Do you think if this was the case of genetic factors, then we would see that? So what uh, questions possibly. do you want to ask, David? Yeah. You I mean, have complicated. measures Obviously, to I'm do that. Conceding that you have no questions. That are a major player here. My, my question. Does either... Is oh, the fact oh, that oh, there's your question. It does go, drive go us. Go ahead. And no matter what, no matter what age, actually, the I'm done marking. Just to look what do you mean you're done marking? Before there's any cultural, uh, I have a winner. Yeah. Happened. Okay. What about well, K? This is it's not about. Everyone, I have a winner. No matter what. Have no you reached you are, zero? Yeah, you've got some. If you've reached zero, K. Because those come from. I do too. No, no, it's not about winner. I think that's an it's about, do you have a loser? That's the only. I think that they come oh from in-group and out-group preferences, but I don't think that they are. Um, do you as have you have either all three of you reached zero? Yes or no? Okay. Have any well, of you reached zero? We agree with each other, basically. <laughs> um, 
Well, I disagree no, with the notion that okay. um, none of you have reached zero. So people the, are it more continues. inherently There's nothing more I can do about it, guys. They previously for completely disagreed. Their now own racial they're group because of genetics. In complete agreement. I, just, I disagree with that. <laughs> I believe that that's not in an out group nothing is I can a real do about thing, it. But I don't believe that in an out group usually it matter, applies to race in terms of well. genetics. Judges predisposed to a conclude. Why then would you say, you guys? Why would you post results in the chat? Stop posting results. It's, it's almost purely environmental. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. You can see this with the um one of the studies that I just keep, linked. No, I didn't um, ask black for Americans your scores. did not I view angry faces of you more or less likely to zero. It's a yes or no outgroup. answer. So, like, if if the claim was true, David, then they if would you want probably, to ask them um, that question, say that there's your the, way to do that. Otherwise, in group, you're it's just more yapping. positive, and the out group is less positive. But I believe it's almost purely Shut up, Captain. Stop um, posting scores. This is literally the only thing you, you're them. never allowed to do. You're destroying yeah, but they were looking at everything, every basism. part of the game by doing this. Kay well, already said my bad because he when we look at these studies, why you we can do see that. kind of a basis. No. We can we'll see that if somebody were to characterize their out group as more aggressive and more angry then they would probably have a lot more Jesus assumptions Christ. to make about Unhinged. them correct yes okay so what this that's one factor of many though so well i agree if your point here uh, actually what what is the source for this um I put it in the debate deathmatch uh, channel. It's okay. on the last page because there's a lot Wick of pages, but Griff the last page is generally what, what I'm Wick about. Griff coins. These? Okay. I'm just gonna read through this because this doesn't sound. Literally, right to nobody me. has ever done this. It's just there in the case that you want to do those. Nobody's forcing you to do that. Okay, this is in America. Nobody's doing any of that. It's mm -hmm. there for you guys well, to have fun with. Would the environmental Jesus factors Christ. not be something which maybe overwhelms or subsumes the in-group or in-group bias or out-group bias that they did actually have that has been overridden? Are you saying that... Um, mm -hmm. Why you would call other people racist? Because of, you don't speak okay, their so language. The reason why I'm saying it's that so it's easy um, to almost purely socio when you don't economic know status their and social, language. Um, status is because everybody's speaking at first, English here, so I don't know what that has to do with anything. In the study, me. they looked at people that were um, seen as high class and high status in their countries, and then they go down to um, African Americans in America, which unfortunately are usually seen more as low-class citizens to a lot of people. So they were looking at advantaged versus disadvantaged. And then they found that the disadvantaged did not have a correlation with feeling more uh, biased towards their own race. What about the fact that black people experience uh, more police brutality? and they commit more crimes in America, would that not uh, be some environmental factor where the aggressive faces are more likely to elicit this response? Yeah, those could totally be environmental factors. I'm saying that, like, um, yeah, those could totally be environmental factors. Um, but I don't believe that it's as much of a problem as people make it out to be, and that's what kind of is a breeding ground for racial bias. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of agreeing again. Because uh, environmental factors <laughs> can really cover everything here. Like, that's the problem. Yeah, okay, now you're entering into, um, like, levels of, uh, what do you call it, discrimination, racial bias, racism, and all of these types of things. But there are multiple ways and multiple reasons that people can be... Um, for or against those things or they support those things or don't support those things and it doesn't inherently have to do with uh, genetics it a lot of times genetics are referred to if you want to go down the path of that and you have an, a disagreement there but it doesn't look like the case it honestly just looks like while a week ago you both like were on like essentially opposite sides of the argument which is why the argument happened in the first place um it seems like right now whether you're talking about adults yes or children you're going to have minor differences because you both kind of agree 
kind of don't agree, but it's very, very minuscule. It's not that extreme that you did previously. Um, I don't know if you guys yeah. want to explore like biases and discrimination and racism in general. Yeah. Uh, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what is the premise of this? We can, we can, uh, we're going to continue the scores as we previously had them. Nothing of that sort is changing, but we are giving okay. an opportunity for a different discussion to be had. And everybody needs to pay attention that not, no research has been done on this matter. Um, it's just they're going for it because they're both interested in it. So the, the prompt would be um, racial discrimination exists and the argument uh, in who's, who's the one who's supporting uh, to a big extent or to a high extent, and the other one is arguing, no, this is this has to do with like, like genetics or something like that. I can imagine blowhole is on the side of genetics, right? Sure, okay. I'll take it. Yeah. All right, all right, there you go, guys. So there's a new prompt. Go for it. Okay, so I believe that um, racial discrimination, as well as um, racial bias, is more and in, is not inherent to somebody's genetics i believe that it is purely basically purely environmental i do believe that in and out group is a thing and i do believe that um these this psychological phenomenon exists but i don't think it really exists inherently in the bounds of race do you accept that there's certain realities that do exist that they're uncomfortable to talk about but they do exist and I can go really simple for this. Um, black people and white people have different skin colors, correct? Yep. So there's a genetic difference that we can establish here. I'm not using this as my point. I'm just using this to jump off. But basically, um, the reason these skin colors are different is because each racial group evolved for uh, hundreds of thousands of years, separated from each other. And as a result of that, from natural selection and from sideways genetic uh, manipulation and mutation, you'll start to get different traits in each of these main races. Do you agree with that? Wait, hold on. Can you repeat the last part? I kind of cut out for a little bit. Okay. So due to the length of time separated from each other, the main races, the main human races, black people, white people, Asian people, Indians, blah, 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 because they've been separated from each other for so long, but they've been evolving for this entire time, they're going to evolve unique traits, each of them, genetically. Oh, no, I don't believe that they um, evolve different traits genetically. Really? So you don't no. think that black people have higher concentrations of uh, fast twitch muscle fibers? Oh, no, I believe that. I mean, like, in terms of, like, bias, I don't believe that. It's, like, a genetic thing. Uh, maybe not. I mean, and that's that's a hard one to analyze. But going back to what I was saying about the fast twitch muscles, that will affect the way someone acts, right? For example, you're more likely to punch someone if your muscles move faster. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I can kind of agree with that. And from that, I can make the logical conclusion that uh, there is a possibility that outwardly anyway, maybe not in some mental genetic way, but that um, like people can potentially be seen as more aggressive. Wait, wait, guys, guys, we need to understand this. Are we saying that black people are like have an uncontrollable spasm within their arms no, and they just react outwardly? Because I don't think this is what Blowhole <laughs> no. is arguing for. I think what he's saying is when that person intends to punch somebody, they have an accelerated rate of being able to punch Bingo. somebody. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Just making sure of that. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> I don't believe that um, just because that is a fact that can be um, I have a problem with the syllogism so you're saying that um, just because s black people have more fast twitch muscle fibers and that means that um, if they intend to punch someone they could potentially do more harm so they're seen as more aggressive I don't agree with that why not if there's a higher chance that they will uh, conduct violence on someone because of these fast twitch muscle fibers if all other components are controlled He's for the exact from. same situation if they are 10 time, uh, ten percent more likely to punch He's someone standing on the position that's just a fact 
I feel like um, most people don't dive um, too much into like fast switch and slow twitch muscle fibers. I believe that it is purely because of the media that is being presented to them that they view black people as more aggressive. Potentially, yeah. I mean, the environmental factors controls for so much here, but my main yeah, argument... I feel like that's the only factor in terms of racial bias. I believe but, that there's no genetic factor. But you accept that there's more fast twitch muscle fibers, so that is a genetic. I accept component. that there's more fast twitch muscle fibers, but that does not mean that just because black people have more fast twitch muscle fibers, that means genetically that people are more prone to be biased against them. I don't believe that. Well, uh, if they're more likely to punch Okay, guys, I'm going to ask you to hold it there. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. We have a trivia. (laughs) So, Blowhole answers first, and considering he gets the question incorrect, then um, I don't know we'll be given a chance to answer correctly. Okay, and in the event that either or would answer correctly, they will receive one point. So here we go. Which popular condiment was once sold as a medicinal cure for diarrhea? Ketchup. Ketchup. (laughs) We're not... Oh, fuck. Okay, Blowhole was was supposed to answer. Yeah, okay. So one point for Blowhole. No, it was uh, Blowhole to answer first. And if he got it wrong, you would be able to answer. I don't know. So one point for Blowhole. All right. Continue where you are. Okay. Okay. So I'll just repeat what I said before then. So if you're if you've got higher concentrations of fast twitch Good muscle job, fibers, Swifty. Good that job. means you're more likely to punch someone in a situation where See all you guys, other factors that's are how you do for, it. That would then have other people. I don't think that you're more likely to punch someone. I think that you're more likely to do more harm when punching someone. <clears throat> uh, well, I don't have any sources for this, but basically, you are more likely to punch. Like, there's an earlier activation energy as your brain sends a signal to it so you know if you're in if you're annoyed or something you feel like you're going to punch someone if a black person's in that same situation the activation energy is just that wee small bit less and it means maybe it's only 0.1 percent more likely but that's how it plays out yeah so i feel like we're talking about like um the brain sending responses to the arm to punch somebody so um I believe that if you were to do that, it's more of like an impulse control thing, and it's not more of like a, you are genetically more predisposed to punching somebody. Ultimately, the main controlling factor is your impulse control, but the actual impulses themselves, there's there's a fine gradation in it. You know, as I was saying, if you're angry, sometimes you feel agitated and you can lash out. Uh, like people are more likely to do that with the same anxiety feeling or feeling of anger. I just fundamentally disagree. Okay. Well, I don't have any sources for it, so... <laughs> I don't need move on. Yeah, what other topic do we uh, contest on in terms of, like, race? What about the fact that different races created different civilizations? What about... Here's, here's one for you guys. What about... Oh, fuck. That's going to get me fucking cancelled. Holy shit. All right, never mind. Go on with the pyramids. Yeah, that's oh. def- that was definitely going to get me cancelled. All right, go ahead. I didn't say anything. Well, what about uh, different civilizations then, and the fact that uh, they're completely different between races? Are you saying that uh, African American people or African people are more likely to build less thriving civilizations in not society? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, I was just asking a clarifying question. My bad. I wasn't like harping on it or anything. <laughs> I know it's a, this is a scary topic. I'm trying not to get the boss banned for saying anything, but, um, wait, what is, wait, wait, go, explain it a little bit more to me and I'll let you know if you can talk about it. Well, it's just the fact that white people created this certain type of society. Yeah. Asian people created that. That's basically. Yeah. Go with it. Go with it. Okay. Um, if that's what you believe and that's your position now guys just for a frame of reference because this previously happened I don't have sources to cite is not a adequate response at any point in other words you shouldn't be holding opinions in life if you don't genuinely believe them so if you are going to be arguing for something and you don't have sources nobody's asking you for sources they are they are they're gonna 
you know, make your point stand out more or better. In other words, you're actually citing something relevant. But otherwise, if you genuinely believe in something, then talk about it openly and be confident in it. Otherwise, yeah, n n don't worry about the sources if you don't have any. Um, okay. Yeah. Just go with it. The, the point I had uh, when I said that last time about the fast twitch muscle fibers was I don't know how to proceed from there. What I was saying is true. I, I don't know if the judges can Google it or what, but the activation energy is lower. That's just a fact. But I don't have a source on me right now for it, so I don't know how else to say it. Okay, so what was the other topic that you were trying to delve into? Oh well, yeah, the other topic, uh, basically I think that white people are more keen on uh, building systems and things like that. Uh, this is due to the fact that white people evolved when in, there was an ice age basically and you had to plan more ahead, you had to plan for your food ahead and blah blah blah. When you do that, you start to focus on systems. There starts to be uh, genetic lineages passing down where those who are better at systems then pass on their genes and this can this is an uh, an evolutionary pressure as they call it this was the case for hundreds of thousands of years as a result we now get uh, these systems that white people like if you look at politics for example and white people have 10 million different kinds of political types and ideologies and all this kind of stuff i think that's a lot of it and not all of it but a lot of it's genetic Okay, so do you believe that uh, African people or people of African descent have less inclination genetically to research or um, come up with new ideas? Um, the problem with this kind of conversation is that's like an end effect, even though I was talking about end effects with white people as well. Um, I think that maybe in another environment, if uh, black people, for example, were in uh, Europe during that time, they maybe would have built the same. So the problem is we don't have anything to compare this to, basically. So I'm just looking to the historical record. I can talk about all of this stuff because I'm Asian. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be seen as racist. Okay, so you um, realize that a lot of um, some of some of the biggest civilizations throughout history were african civilizations right you acknowledge that yes i fantastic um ethiopian civilizations egyptian yep absolutely by the way if you are racist um that is that is remains to be seen i have my own opinions and everybody else does obviously i have a better opinion than i previously did but that's regardless just say your opinions guys don't be worried about the fucking labels nobody knows who you are um, you'll be fine, all right? You can have the opinions you want. The whole point of debating is to be find out that you're wrong about certain things that helped you be racist in the past and now you no longer are racist. So just go with your opinions, stand firm on your ground, don't worry about the rest. Okay, yeah, so a lot of these civilizations, um, a lot of the biggest civilizations throughout history were not We're of good, Dalton. people We're good, brother. creating these civilizations and systems. Um, these people were not of white descent. They were of Middle Eastern descent. They were of African descent. They were of um, sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes with some civilizations, European descent. I will grant you that. Uh, like the Roman Empire, for example. For example. Um, but in terms of ancient civilizations, it seems like it has no genetic factor playing into it that um people of certain races are more predisposed to building up a better civilization than their counterparts well the evidence is as i said before it's the historical record the fact that these civilizations did appear is also the fact that if you um what's it called again rhodesia when white people went down to Africa and they created their own countries, there were similarities to white European civilizations there. Um, I believe that they carry the civilization with them. Now, how much of that is genetic? I don't know. I don't think there's a gene, like a build the Roman Empire gene or anything like that. But Yeah, I don't think it's genetic yeah. at all. Well, I do think that genetics leads to culture. And I think culture is what led to civilization. Do you disagree with that? 
that genetics lead to um, culture. culture. I feel like the environment that you're in leads to culture. It's not genetics. Yeah, a combination of both. But basically, oh uh, no, it's not a combination of both. At least that's what I believe. I I don't believe that it's a combination of both. Okay, well, absolutely, they do. Um, we've Ooh. got different yeah. evolutionary pathways. We've got different. One second, levels. one second. Yeah. Disting distinguish between that. So your position, I don't know. I'm just confirming this is a extreme position. In other words, you all blowhole needs to do now is prove that this is relevant one percent of the time, and he wins this argument. You realize that, right? So you're holding a very extreme position, which is a hundred percent accurate. In other words, there is nothing to do with genetics ever. Am I correct in assuming that? I'm saying that there's nothing to do with genetics in terms of um, building better systems or building better. That's okay. That's your position. Yeah. It's 100%. Yep. Never, ever the case, right? Never. Okay, and blowhole. Okay, there you go. All right. So you disagree that genetics leads to cultural differences. Is that right? No. I believe that environment leads to cultural differences. What about the fact that Asian people uh, are majority lactose intolerant, while white people aren't? That is that of col is that of cultural significance or is yeah. that of genetic significance the, the food and liquids that you take in will impact your oh culture. yeah 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 you're right yeah i can see to that point i guess okay <laughs> i mean yeah, you guys I've... you guys are about as good faith as they fucking come i don't know how these fucking judges are judging this i would have a really fucking bad time because this is very difficult because you obviously both are extremely good faith which is commendable um okay what do we think about fuck okay here's a conversation we had you've got within the olympics or any types of sports event that have to do with things like running uh, and sprinting um uh, the, um, a lot of people would have the opinion that essentially that um, the majority of winners are of African origin and because and it's due to genetics would be blowholes side and I don't know would be because of the environment so go ahead blowhole go start yeah. okay yeah. Uh, so obviously Africans uh, spent more time genetically, historically, for hundreds of thousands of years running through the, the African plains and the African savanna. And as a result, that will lead to muscular differences. Those muscular differences then lead to the fact that I believe uh, Usain Bolt is still the number one record holder. And you'll find yeah, these I records so. across the Olympics, most likely, to do with running, that is, anyway. And that's my stance. Okay, my stance has to do more with um, environment and work ethic. So I believe that um, given somebody, given somebody um, works as hard as one of these Olympic athletes, they could eventually um, hold the same position as a record holder or maybe even the number one record holder. I believe that it's not as likely if they put the same amount of work in because black people will have natural advantages such as with their muscles. Uh, yeah, but even... do you believe that um, uh, they would have to put in... Do you believe that um, if somebody worked harder than us, these individuals, then they could hold the standing in... Uh, I'm not sure. Older. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember the name of that swimmer. You know the one who's got like a freakish body? Oh, I can't remember his name. But basically the reason he's so good is just because his, his abdomen is abnormally long. Michael Phelps. Oh, like, Michael Phelps. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe those similar advantages are the case for black runners. You can maybe I believe that get beyond it. Sorry, go on. I believe that... Um... In the case of Michael Phelps, the fact that he has um, an abnormally large torso is minuscule compared to um, how much work he puts in. So I believe that if he had those advantages and put in less work, then he would not be nearly as good as he is now. 
and I believe that um, if he didn't have those advantages and he did put in that work, then he would probably be just as good as he is now. No, I, no, I disagree completely. I use this example a lot, actually, uh, with Elon Musk. Uh, he did put in a lot of work. He did spend a lot of time studying the right things, but it's inarguable to say that he did get lucky in his life to land these positions and land the money that he's made. Oh, no, I'm talking about, like, physically, like, with Michael Phelps. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, like, obviously, some of these things do have a component, but they are super minuscule. I mean, Michael Phelps, he spends, like, I think it's like 30 hours in the pool a week. Like, it's a full-time job for him. Of course, no so. doubt he works hard, but my point is basically that if someone didn't have that torso advantage that he has, and that person worked the exact same amount of hours, then they would be nowhere near Michael Phelps because he has that body that gives him the advantage, and that's the case that I'm applying to black people for running as well. I just fundamentally disagree. <laughs> Because, so? like, these these oh. things are <clears throat> super minuscule. Okay, so do you both ag so. do you both acknowledge that certain pe uh, that people are born individually and different? Physically, yes, mentally, obviously. yeah, obviously. Okay, so you both acknowledge that. Um, I think the disagreement is con coming in because I don't know is it saying that this is not inherited, uh, inherited genetically. In other words, it's not passed down from generation to generation to generation. Um, it, it is simply that this person was born with an abnormality or an advantage in, in terms of sports, right? Or what, do you, what is your position on the matter when you're saying that it, it's not like, like, do you think that he just trained harder and um, like, what? Yeah. I uh, believe that and just because he don't think his torso plays a part at all. Seriously. What do you, what do you mean? Do you believe that? his torso well, let, let's say um you take the same person but you reduce you get rid of this advantage just take, take a normal guy but same height blah 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 same amount of training time do you think they would get the exact same swimming time no but they would get very close to it because every tenth of a second in swimming counts and that would probably fare very close to the work that he's uh, put in and they would probably get um, very Absolutely. similar margins content. Margins are fine. There's no doubt that the margins are fine, but okay. that, that's you, an old professional. Do you, okay, do you guys also like think that, because I I'm trying to narrow down where the disagreement is happening here, because it's not like if you both acknowledge that some that people are born differently, then we can acknowledge that certain people are born with bigger chests and bigger torsos and bigger wingspans and bigger like muscle fibers or whatever. Um, I think the disagreement should be coming in place where it's essentially saying something like um, race. It's embedded within race. In other words, the African people are born with an advantage when it comes to like running. Uh, the white people are born with like an advantage to something else. And it's all to do with race, right? That's where your disagreement is coming in? Yes. Yes. Typically, yeah. on average, there's a, an increased chance that white people controlling for everything else, they will be able to run faster or longer than white people. Okay, when you when you say on average, what about at the extremes? Because on average is the milk toast approach to the scenario and it would be a reasonable approach to have. It wouldn't be an approach that somebody who inherently believes that somebody is genetically advantaged based on their race would have. The, um, the person who would be supporting that position would acknowledge that it's not just on average that this is happening a majority of the time. In other words, that if you're born black, guess what? A majority of the time, if not anything else, you're going to be born with advantages when it comes to running. Is that your position, Blowhole? Or yes. You... Yeah, okay, so it's a majority. It's not on average. It's like, yeah. Well, what I meant was yeah. on average... Compared to the average of white people, the average of black people, the black people's average. Okay, all right, okay. And I don't know is saying, look, somebody can be born who's white, who also is, again, while on average they will have a smaller torso or a smaller wingspan, this person was born with a bigger torso or bigger wingspan. Or is I don't know saying, I don't give a fuck about the wingspan or the torso, it has nothing to do with why he won. Yeah, I'm saying that it has very little to do with why he won. Okay, all right. So now you guys know where you're both at. 
argue for the affirmative or the negative? I mean, I don't think I mean, I'm, I mean why do you well. believe the thing that you believe, Blowhole? Like, yeah, I can have the positions I have, and so does everybody else, but why is it that you find it so funny and so hilarious and so obvious that that wouldn't be the case? Because uh, there's different genetic makeups between each different race, so that's going to play a part no matter what. All we can do as it's almost insignificant, results. is what I believe. I, Just I to clarify, to judge that. I don't know how to judge that. I think it is quite significant, especially if in professional sports, the difference between someone who's top fifty and someone who's top ten is usually it's a small margin. It's not this big massive gulp. It's a small margin, and those tiny, even insignificant advantages can really build up, especially when you get to the professional level. Yeah, I believe, like, with the case with Michael Phelps, it's almost, almost, like, completely insignificant to the fact that he has, like, maybe webbed hands or, like, a long torso. I don't believe that plays that much of a factor into why he wins. It must play a massive factor. Um, I mean, the scientifics, the dynamics of it, well, this is pretty well understood, as you're saying, the webbed hands... You can push more water easier than if you didn't have webbed hands, right? That would give an advantage. Yeah, but I believe that given somebody who has a normal build and is given the same opportunities as Michael Phelps, they would probably have a time near exact to what his is. Near exact, but not quite. And that's the yeah, point I'm not making quite, here. Just, not quite. just barely. I'm talking like 0. 0.2 seconds. I don't know how to judge the exact amount. We need to do some sort of simulation okay. for this. To okay, so exactly why that. why would that average person, I don't know, not reach Michael Phelps' his time? Even though oh, they... he potentially could. He would just have to work a little bit harder than him. Work harder than Michael Phelps, and he could achieve basically the same result. Very, very minuscule difference would be your position. Or if maybe anything. even like a little bit better. Or he even a little bit better. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Given somebody. So in other words, you need to handicap Michael Phelps in some way to make that other person equal or better. Okay. So you're saying an, no. an opposite position. No, your position, uh, uh, Blow's position would essentially be that no, this is the peak of the peak of the peak, which essentially is why he's the number one in the world and has hold, held that title for God knows how long. Um, there's obviously something going on there. Now, does that mean that everybody else hasn't trained as hard as him? Do either of you have any reasons like uh, Michael Phelps trains for nine hours a day and everybody else trains for eight hours a day? Do we have any frame of reference or anything to point to in, order, in other words for why you hold the positions that you do? No, I just believe that given somebody works harder than Michael Phelps, then they could probably get a better time than him. But it would be extremely hard to do. And that's based on what? What have you read in the past? Anything? It doesn't have to do with Michael Phelps. It can be with something else. Um, do you have anything else to point to to justify why you hold that position? Um, I don't have any sources, no. A any, anything, any, any type of story, anything you've read before, um, personal experience, like you've got a cousin, I, I don't know, a anything? Well, I've read that, um, or I've heard, mm -hmm. I don't know the validity of the claim, but I've heard that Michael Phelps spends around 30 hours a week in the pool, and I think that if somebody were to spend, let's say, 35 hours a week in the pool, they could eventually probably surpass him, just because they're working harder. And do you think it's possible? Oh, sorry. Yeah. What's the statistical chances that Michael Phelps is the hardest working swimmer in the world? Think about it. He's probably around, or if not the hardest working but swimmer in the, the world. The hardest, the, the chances of that are minuscule. Now, he's going to be up there, no doubt, but the chances that he is just the hardest working person ever of all other swimmers in the world, statistically, very unlikely. Well, I believe that the direct correlation is he works harder and he develops a better technique at swimming and he spends more time in the pool. Therefore, he is better practiced at swimming and he does. And way better every than all other swimmer in the world. 
than every yep. single other swimmer. Mm-hmm. That's a bold claim. Yeah. Which sounds like nonsense to me. It's not like he's going to spend his entire life practicing. What did you say? 30 hours a week? That's not yeah. that much. I'm sure there's people who do 35, 40 hours a week. There's plenty of athletes who do spend their entire life practicing. Yeah, but, but do they compete? Uh, well, if they're practicing, they're obviously intended to compete uh, professionally because they're not working. But because there's certain other differences. Basically, I think what I generally agree with what you're saying is the amount of time practiced is going to put you on an upward trajectory in professional athleticism. But there's an augmentation of this. Right, cha- last chance you have. to jump it's, into I mean, the debate. We're going to call it soon. Football, for example. Defenders in football, they're always Anybody taller, want to get any direct questions in, really any trivia? Defender. That's an advantage. Go ahead and right? give me the questions. Football. Yeah, that's as well. And I think the same case. I've already tried. You didn't ask my question. No, did because that was in the middle of the debate, and really you're required to you spend do bits time on it or to do the pay bits or whatever well, in order to do that. It does have this advantage, which augments this training. I yeah, retract got my claim coins. of saying that he's Bits. worked harder than every other swimmer. I do believe Are that they he's worked ass very hard, but I believe men? that as time and Are time has gone on, this is important. he okay. has had to right, maybe we'll work that, a little okay. bit less because Any his other body questions? has adapted more to um, Relevant or irrelevant? Not, not relevant. Re- irrelevant questions. Do we have any irrelevant yeah, questions sure. considering nobody wants and, to uh, do relevant questions? Fuck you. Uh, the only really thing that <laughs> he didn't spend bits, which is why I said, considering we don't have any questions, we need to, we're need we going to ask some questions. I mean, obviously, as age catches up to him, people will start Jesus overtaking Jesus Christ, we're an insufferable yeah. human being. I mean, there's loads of factors when you think about it. It's not just practice, it's age, your body shape, even your mentality, your diet. How big your nose is, how much oxygen you can take into your lungs, your lung size. Cats or dogs. There's so many factors based. here, that, which most of them are genetic. It's just that so the what? differences are small. Tits or ass men, cats or dogs. Yeah, the differences are small. You're right. So I think we agree. Okay, awesome, guys. Right, we're going to close off with some random questions um, offered by the chat. Um... Okay, so first question cats or dogs? Dogs. Cats. Dogs are way better. Yeah. There you go, guys. Me. There you go, guys. Don't know how you want to judge that way. one, but you're going to have to judge it, judges. All right. That's included into the judgment. One point Uh-oh. for who you agree with, minus one point for who you disagree with. Okay. So it's going to be, yeah, you know how that works. Next question. Tits or ass? Tits. Ass. There you go, boys and girls. I want to know if either of them raised kids and if they were racist. Okay, no. Um, we're not asking that. <laughs> I'm okay. not racist, by the way. Okay. Right, judges. Apart from the questions that you were just asked, I hope you included them into your scoring. Now I want you to go ahead and add the two plus bonus points. I'm talking very slowly and clearly because there seems to be a misunderstanding between everybody when it comes to this. Wait, somebody else. Oh, shit. Last question. A single tribe. Oh, we've got, okay. We've got, we've got a question. All right, never mind. A single tribe from Kenya, the Kalenjin, can blow everyone off the long track distance track. Sorry. Is this a verifiable proof of genetic advantage or not, and why? So go ahead, guys. You're going to engage with this one. It's probably the strongest proof we can get. I was actually trying to remember the name of that tribe. That's who I was thinking of. Um, I have read into this, and there are arguments environmentally as well, because I believe they have to travel a long distance to get water, and they have to travel a long distance to get resources, and that can build up if you spend all your life doing it. But fact of the matter is that they do win or they do set these marathon-esque times at an amazing rate better than anyone else so genetics has to play a part i believe that environment has to play a part because as you 
walk or carry stuff long distances, you start to build a lot of slow twitch muscle fibers as a result, and this results in them being better in terms of long distance running. Okay, I hope that explains it. One last question. Sigma or skibbity? If you Sigma. don't know what that is, just answer it. Sigma, I guess. Both are <laughs> Sigma. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Sigma, yeah, that closes the debate. Thank you all for participating. Thank you, debaters. Thank you, judges. Now, I'm going to ask the judges to enter the chat. Please do not say anything. They already answered tits or ass. They, blowhole is tits. I don't know is ass. Score accordingly, Captain. Thank you very much. So one point gets added on for each of those values that you all agree with or disagree with. Uh, and one gets removed if you disagree. And then also add on the bonus points at the end. Once you're done with that, come into the chat. Do not say anything until I call you out specifically. You are going to go in the order that I ask you. And you're going to give us the points. My questions are very relevant. They are very relevant. You're right, Swifty. Um, the questions... Uh, sorry, fuck. Um, you're going to go one by one and you're going to give us the order that you scored in. So, Blowhole is going to give, be the first score that you mention. Uh, I don't know will be the second score that you mention. okay? And we're going to go one by one. I'm going to call you out individually. So, everybody get in here. I want all the judges in the chat room is everybody here no not everybody is here get your asses in here okay i'm just gonna move him that's that's captain wait wait okay wait. all right i'm tallying okay I'm, tally. I'm going to mute server mute you or oh, sorry just don't don't tell us anything until you're done all right while we yeah but this is not going to count wavy this is not going to count I'm only doing it because we didn't have enough people with bits prior to me mentioning it, and then everybody decided they wanted to, so it's awesome. Edging or mewing? This will not add on to the scoreboard. Just tell us. Edging and mewing. Edging and mewing accordingly. Mate based. Mute the dumbass judges. I would love to mute you, David. That would be amazing if I could do that. Unfortunately, you haven't broken any rules, so I can't do that. Where is the other fucking judge? Where, where is he? Where are you, fucking Stella? Where is Stella? Get your ass in here. David's been facing in the chair. Yeah, it's the, yeah. David is a. He's uh I don't, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Stella's not even here. I think Stella just abandoned judging at some <laughs> point and just gave up. I'm not even going to lie. No wonder. I, I never will break the rules. <laughs> Thank you, Swifty. Thank you, Swifty. David, too serious. Chill out for real. Based. Okay, we're going to wait for Stella. We're going to give Stella another one or two minutes to join. And then we will get started. Right, guys, until Thanks. Stella gets here, tell me what you think about the debate. Tell me how it went. Obviously, it was a bit of a shit show. We all understand that. But apart from that, the feel and vibe of it, do you have any, like, things that you want to add? Do you want to... Did you not like anything? Go for it. Debaters, debaters. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. I thought it, it was yeah. good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It went about it. how I expected, actually, because I knew we would meet in the middle there. I didn't expect the boss to try and get blood out of that stone so hard. Yeah. I appreciate it. Good oh, you work. like that. Yeah. What? How did we feel about that? I like good. that you were kind of guiding the conversation. You like that? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you, you took it upon yourself, and I think that was the right choice. Okay, good. Then we'll do more of that. Sounds awesome. Let's see what everybody else thinks of it. Dumbass debate for two reasons. One, boss as a moderator is the worst. Oh, right. So we already acknowledge that pretty much everybody disagrees with you. Not, no surprise there, David. Two, debaters shifted from the original debate. No shit, Sherlock. Thank you for your input, David. Always not appreciated, but go ahead. I think David is proof that aggressive genes exist. Yeah. 
Even I'm willing to concede on that one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> who, ha who has the aggressive genes? <laughs> this is about Anyone to get racist. This is about to get racist real fast. Holy shit. Okay, no. Yeah, let's not answer that one. Let's leave that one out. You I'm mark. Keep shut. Yeah. Stella, are you alive or what? Right, okay. We're just going to start calling it for judges. Um, right. K, you can start off. So when you're ready, um, okay. give us your I'm score. ready for motion. I'm ready. You're ready? Right, uh, I'm ready. Awesome. All right, so blowhole 25, uh, IDK 21. 25 and 21. That is pretty close. That is pretty close. Yep. Awesome. Right. Ever, uh, Captain, when you are ready. Uh, blowhole, thirty-three. Okay. I don't know, twenty-six. All right, we're not far off. We're not far off. All right, fucking Stella, you you literally have like immediately need to get your ass in here. I don't know where you are, Stella. Where the fuck are you, Stella? All right, I'm just gonna, let's see. I'll call Stella, see what's going on. Stella, hey. where the fuck are you? Stella, Ella, Ella. How, hey, can, I, how hey. can I call this person? Call. Stella called it a while ago, I can see. Ah, oh, this is a pain in the ass. Fuck's sake, fucking judges. Holy shit, bro. I really need to start paying you guys. Otherwise, yes, boss is such a bitchy bitch. Bitch. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't think it's ringing. I don't know how to make it ring. I have no idea. It says disconnect. It says everything else. All right, guys. Well, you're going to have to stick around for a while until Stella turns up because I can't just pull numbers out of my ass. Right, okay, so we're going to revolt. All right, so we'll do the next best thing. Right, so poll in chat. Here we go. Wait, he's your boss? A pyramid scheme, I see. Okay, so unless Stella turns up, then we're going to take chat into consideration. Chat, you have the opportunity to include your biases into chat right now. Poll. Okay, that works. Awesome. Question. Who won? Response one. Blowhole. Um, blowhole. Absolutely. Wait, I, need, I can't see that. Blowhole. Absolutely. Extreme. um blowhole okay no no i'm just including it it's just different levels very uh average and then little okay and then we'll include for i don't know because if it's a little bit then we're, anyway just just answer the fucking question all right extreme Average. Uh, allow additional votes. I don't know what that is. Okay, so fuck it. We won't. Get, no, no little. All right, no little. Fuck my life, bro. Extreme average. All right, extreme and average. There you go. Answer accordingly. You've got two minutes. So go ahead and vote, chat. Fucking hell, there's an ad exactly when I post the fucking thing. Holy shit. Stella, you really fucked us in the ass with this one. What did Stella say? What was the last comment Stella made in chat? Stella. Wait, am I not even in the fucking call anymore? Oh, great. 
Wait, am, right? am I not even? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't even in the call. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so Stella's not answering. We've got a poll in chat. Poll is, um, chat is going to answer. And depending on what answer they give us, we will see. Yeah. Sweet. We're just giving our advice and kind of breakdown of the match. All right, awesome. Yeah. Hello. Oh, Stella's here. Where's Stella? I'm here. Jeez. Stella. Stella. Hey. Stella. Where have you been? Okay, that's amazing. Fuck you, chat. Anyway, answer the answer the question, chat. Do the poll. We're curious to see what you all think. But otherwise, Stella, I want you to uh -huh. give us your score for blowhole and then for I don't know. Okay. Wait. Did you wait? Wait. One question. Did you were you here for all the random questions we asked? Yes, I had my headset on. I was just I, I was pooping. I was, I was in the bathroom. Oh, you were taking a shit while we were doing the debate. That's amazing. Um, yes. Did you also hear about the bonus points? No, I didn't hear that. Part. Okay, so tell me how many questions did you get, like, from the last thing? Like, did you get the tits and ass one? No. No. Okay, yeah, so... Blowhole said tits. I don't know said ass. Go ahead and add a point for whoever... Ooh. You okay. Whoever you agree with. And Blowhole said tits and Mercury said ass? Yes, and remove okay. a point for whoever you don't like their answer. Okay. Now, motherfuckers, look what they did in fucking chat. Hey, Next one <laughs> is cats and dogs. Um, Blowhole okay. said dogs. I don't know said cats. So do the that same thing for that. Mm -hmm. Then both of them answered sigma. So go ahead and add a point for each of them. Okay. Unless you are for Skibbity, in which case you would remove one point for, from both of them. And the last question was something about a sophisticated question. This was... Fuck my life. Okay, so a single try from Kenya. The Kalenjin can blow everyone off the long distance track. Is this a verifiable proof of genetic advance, advantage or not? And why? Um, I don't know said no, it has to do with the environment. And Blowhole said it has to do with genetics and the environment, more so genetics. Correct, Blowhole? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's it. Go ahead and answer the points or add on points. And then once you're done with that, I want you to then add on two extra points to whoever you feel represented their side the best. And then give us your end score. Oh. Okay. Fuck me, my friend. Um, all right, so you want blowhole score first? Yes, blowhole score first. Um, so blowhole, I have 13. 13. So that's mm -hmm. 71. Okay. And for I don't know? 20. Oh, very close. Very close. So... 13 and 20 that's so stella wanted i don't know to uh win who else voted in favor of i don't know or did both of you do blowhole your majority well, score i did blowhole you did blowhole blowhole, blowhole. okay so blowhole but you the are chat the also need to vote no fucking chat is half and half chat chat does 50 and 50 chat can go fuck itself right Congratulations, Blowhole. Fucking people like David. Yeah, I know. Fucking David must have <laughs> voted twice. Congratulations, Blowhole. You are the official winner of our second fucking debate death match. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you brother. Much. Good job. And Thank it was you. a very, very close match. So chat wasn't far off. 71, 67. Really not that far. Okay, I need to divide this. My maths. <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, Blowhole, the winner. Um, and not that far behind. I don't know. So it was pretty fucking. Okay. So that's. Yeah, how close was it? Yeah. I'll point? give you the end one. Two seconds. And divided by 67. I don't know maths. Oh, I'm multiplying. That's not what I want to do. I don't know maths. 22. He says. Shut up. Yes. My maths is fine. Okay. So 24, 22. Uh, in favor of blowhole. Wow. Yeah, re connect. really close. That was close. Yeah, good job, guys. Good job. And thank you all for participating. Thank you, judges. Thank you, debaters. I think in accordance with the shit show that it began as, we did pretty good, okay? 
everybody included you guys for you tried we moved on and i hope everybody enjoyed it thank you everybody for watching and now uh, debaters give us your closing statements like where can people find you if you're like influ like content creators or i don't know say what do you have any last words well i'll just say thanks to everyone thanks to the judges for donating their time thanks to the boss for posting this I enjoyed it thank you i don't know i'll say that it was a good faith discussion and i appreciate that and um thanks to the judges as well thanks to blow for participating thanks to you for hosting and that's all i have to say yeah thank you guys for being so good faith you really were um it is what it is guys next time it's my responsibility i should have confirmed that you guys have the same opinions that you had a week ago but i didn't think to ever do that uh, that has given me some good insight for the future but until then once again thank you guys and anybody who wants to stick around in the discord you're welcome to do so otherwise you're all free to go thank you guys thank you judges Thanks. i'm not a hostage yeah. anymore <laughs> oh my god yes <laughs> girls in the basement be in these girls the boss says that we are this free let's go these motherfuckers, holy shit.